Hello, and thanks for joining us for worship. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds then to worship. Holy source of life and hope, as we come together this day, open our ears to hear, our eyes to see, and open our hearts to love that we may come to know your ways and follow your paths. Help us grow in love for one another and for all creation as we prepare for the coming of the one who calls us to turn from our false gods to you, Holy One, the true source of our salvation. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of Advent, so we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The second candle is peace. Hear these words from Isaiah 55, 12. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Let us pray together. O God of grace and comfort, in you we find rest for our hearts and peace for our souls. In these times of uncertainty, grant us peace in our lives, peace in this community, and peace in the world. Through Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. Amen. Please join me now in our call to worship. Welcome today to this time of preparation. Although we have been preparing for celebrations, we come seeking to prepare our hearts to receive God's good news. Get ready. The Lord is bringing to us hope and peace. How wonderful it is that the Lord is showering us with peace. Open your hearts and let your spirits be quieted. Be at peace with the Lord. Lord, prepare our lives and bring us peace. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip, ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
you watch the Adele music special one night only filmed at the Griffith Observatory in LA, her albums are titled by her age, 19, 21, 25, and 30. We mostly keep our historical timeline by using dates or years. Remember the year you graduated, the year you got married, the year kids were born, or when you started a new job or moved to a new home. We even remember our favorite songs and movies by the year they were released. The practice of dating historical events by years wasn't common until about 500 CE. Rather, the way events were placed in history for centuries was as it is here in the beginning of the third chapter of the Gospel of Luke, in the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius. The author of Luke situates John the Baptist by naming seven political power brokers of that time. Tiberius was the Roman emperor, Pontius Pilate was governor or prefect of Judea, Samaria, and Idumea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee. This Herod is Herod Antipas, son of Herod the Great, who ruled during the time of Jesus' birth. After Herod the Great's death, his kingdom was divided up between his sons. So Herod Antipas ruled Galilee, his brother Philip, Iteria and Trachonitis to the north and east. The list ends with the high priests, Annas and his son-in-law Caiaphas. There really was only one official high priest at a time, but Annas retained importance and influence even after Caiaphas succeeded him. The Romans controlled the office of high priest. Luke sets John's place in relation to these powerful political and religious authorities and also in the history of salvation, linking John with Jesus' ministry and fate. The word of God did not come to the powerful, but to John, an unknown in the wilderness, chosen by God before his birth to prepare the way of the Lord. The call of John replicates the call of Old Testament prophets like we see in Isaiah, Ezekiel, and Jeremiah. The word of the Lord comes to a prophet who is the son of someone in a particular location in the days of a certain ruler. We know John as the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth and heard Zechariah's prophecy in chapter one. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. John is the bridge between the Old Testament prophets and Jesus. Luke follows the stories of the births of John and Jesus by jumping right to their adult ministries, emphasizing the fulfillment of God's promise. The narrative then shifts to quote Isaiah 40, three through five. And here, John is the voice in the desert calling out to smooth out the rough places, hills and valleys. For Luke, though, the desert is not simply a place, but a recollection of Israel's history that implies a return to God. They've been in the desert before. John's baptism of conversion is for the forgiveness of sins. He baptizes all who are willing to repent, to reorder their lives. The Greek word for conversion, metanoia, is translated as changing one's mind or outlook. It's an inner transformation that bears fruit, which shows up in changed behavior. John's baptism isn't that once-in-a-lifetime event, but is a fresh start at a daily effort to live in the grace of Christ. So we've just a few weeks left until Christmas. How is your preparation going? Would a change of mind or outlook help? Are there places in your life right now that could use some smoothing over some rough places that could use some reconstruction. Reverend Dr. Elmer Collier at the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary says it's important to have some margin in our lives, a cushion of time, space, and energy so we can adapt when things come up. It's important to have time to relax and be renewed, to redeem our daily routines. Maybe you're in a place right now with little or no margin. 
Sometimes the Christmas season causes it, but so can things like the increasing demands of endless tasks at work with no end in sight, the physical efforts needed to care for a parent or other loved one day after day, or worries over a child who is in a difficult place and needs our help. Maybe our margin is reduced because of illness, financial struggles, or difficult relationships, or because of the pandemic, and maybe because of several of these. Our text asks us to return to God, to look at our lives and start to smooth over some of those rough spots, to not get quite so caught up in putting up decorations and shopping and wrapping and running, but to make time for worshipful anticipation and preparation for the celebration of the incarnation of God. Instead of focusing on everything on our to-do list, or on money or lack of money or on finding something to blame for our troubles, can we look inward and work to change our own habits to become the more loving and generous people God calls us to be? The scriptural quote from Isaiah is in all four Gospels, but only in Luke do we find that last line from Isaiah, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And in Luke, salvation is more than eternal life. It is bigger. It means shalom, living in the fullness of God's blessing as a community now. So I'm going to suggest you add four things to your Christmas list. One, set aside a little time each day to meet with God in prayer. Every day, Pray, dear God, please open my eyes, my ears, my heart, my mind, and make me ready for the coming of Jesus. And then listen for the whisper of the Holy Spirit during your day, urging you to do good things. Maybe you'll meet God baking cookies for a neighbor or telephoning someone who's lonely. Maybe you'll feel God's presence in line at the grocery store when the person in front of you doesn't have enough money. And don't be surprised if it's something you don't ordinarily do. Two, spend time with God's word. Read the Christmas story or a daily devotional or start reading all the way through the New Testament or the Bible. Three, say no. Sometimes we have to say no to really good things things we may want to do and feel like we need to do because we won't have time for the best things if we don't develop the ability to also say no to some things. And four, spend some time working on those things you need to smooth out in your life. Take time out for those important relationships. Give yourself permission to take a break from caregiving for a few hours. Take care of yourself so you can do what's needed. At work, can you take time to put tasks in perspective, prioritize, delegate, and make a plan for handling things? What parts of your daily routine and tasks can you simplify for right now? Set aside time with God in prayer and scripture. Learn to say no and spend some time smoothing out your daily life. I truly believe that adding these things will actually help you handle the rest. Getting just a little margin back can help us be spiritually renewed as we give thanks to God for life's blessings. It's almost the end of 2021. Christmas is coming. Christ is coming. The prophet is still calling us to change our ways and draw closer to God, to prepare for the advent, the coming of God into our world. I pray for all of us that we can take a breath, slow down, and through our spiritual preparation, experience Christ coming once again into our lives in peace, hope, love, and joy. Amen. At this time, we prepare to celebrate Holy Communion. So it would be good if you could have a piece of bread, 
a roll or cracker, and some juice or water. Or please join us in spirit. We celebrate an open table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. God of compassion, we are not nearly ready to welcome you. Our preparations are late and inadequate. Our hearts are distracted by worries, hopes, and material clutter. We are a disorderly people. We do not yet love justice and mercy. We do not yet seek peace. So we cannot walk as friends with you. We are sinners. Come to us, O holy and tender one, to forgive us and save us. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable, Jesus was born. So by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh, born of woman, on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered wherever we are and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup over which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of Christ. So I invite you now to take a piece of the bread or cracker. This is the body of Christ broken for you. Amen.
and then the juice. This is the blood of Christ given for you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our offering is an act of worship in which we express our gratitude and reliance on God. Let us rejoice in what we have been given and in what is ours to give. With gratitude for all the blessings you have poured into our lives, Lord Jesus, we come bringing our gifts that they may be used in service to those in need. Bless these gifts and those who have given them, that they may truly be a blessing in your holy name. Amen. sure and certain knowledge that God is always coming into the world. We will seek God, not in a long ago stable or ancient manger, but in the people we meet and the depths of our own hearts. May the blessing of Christmas make you a blessing to others. May the peace of the season pervade all that you do. Now go forth in hope, peace, joy, and love. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.